Hey guys, I'm so happy you decided to join me today. So for this first video of my Whimsy Roo YouTube channel, we are going to be talking about what my personal must have arts and craft supplies should be. I've narrowed it down to 10, my top 10 arts and craft supplies that you must have if you want to do some crafts and art projects with your kids, okay? So, very first thing is paper. You're going to need paper and lots of it. Just regular old printer paper is fine. That gives your kids plenty of blank space to work with, but you're also going to want to have some colored printer paper on hand, um, as well as some construction paper. Um, and then one other thing that is not necessarily, but I really like to have is some heavy paper for things like paint and markers. It doesn't bleed through if you're going to be using markers and it holds up to paint a little bit better instead of falling apart whenever it gets wet. Second thing, speaking of painting, of course, you're going to need some paint, okay? So some watercolor paints, just like these, are probably your best bet if you're trying to avoid some mess. Uh, all you need is a cup of water. It usually comes with a paintbrush. Um, and just let the kids go to town. Maybe coach them a little bit on what happens whenever you mix the paints up a little too much, how they all kind of turn that yucky, muddy brown. So coach them and teach them about how important it is to make sure to wash the brush in between colors. Um, but make sure you also get some regular washable acrylic paints. Uh, those are super fun, and I know it seems like it can be really messy, but with uh, some supervision and some, some coaching, uh, even the littlest artists can figure out how to have fun with their paint without making a huge mess. A few tips for having a no-mess painting session, or I should say a low-mess painting session, is start them out with just a couple of colors, and a very small amount of paint. Now, uh, what this does is it gives them very little access to those paints that are going to make a big mess. Uh, so just give them a little dab on uh, a paper plate or if you have an artist um, uh, palette, then you can use that. But just a regular paper plate is fine. Just give them a little dab of two colors to start with. And then if they ask for more, give them some more if they're ready to. Uh, but be prepared for uh, inevitable finger painting happening, and that's why we make sure to buy washable acrylic paint. It's also helpful if you put them in a apron or a dedicated painting shirt or smock of some sort that will prevent it from getting all over their clothes and all over their little bodies so that you have less to wash whenever we're all done with the painting. After painting, of course, you're going to be needing some markers and crayons are some favorite things of getting these ideas onto paper. You can get a package of markers or crayons or both at the store. Uh, these are really easy to find. You probably already have them around. And if not, like I said, they are super easy to find. Number three on my list. I'm going to want some glue. Now with the glue, we use this a lot to stick things on, stick paper to paper, stick things to paper, or just using it to have a little bit of fun with. Uh, for example, you might want to get some clear glue uh, so that we could make a snow globe or calm down jar or the infamous slime projects those all need some clear glue. Uh, you'll also want some regular school glue. And especially for the littles, some glue sticks is probably the easiest to maneuver and creates the least amount of mess too. But keep some school glue on hand too because we're going to need it for some bigger, heavier things that need to be glued to the paper. Number four on the list, you might want some popsicle sticks. These are always a lot of fun uh, to build with. 
and we also do some sorting and other fun projects with those. So make sure you have some popsicle sticks. Next up is some pipe cleaners. Now, um, pipe cleaners are also called chenille stems. So uh, if you are searching for them on the internet, uh, you might search chenille stems, you might search pipe cleaners. Either way, what you're looking for is these fuzzy little wire bendy things. And these are so much fun, uh, not only to bend and create shapes with, but we also use them a lot for fine motor skills. And if you go onto my blog, uh, you'll see that we really enjoy making things out of pipe cleaners. And so if you head over to the blog, which there is a link down in the description, to head over to that post, you'll see a link to get to our most fun pipe cleaner crafts. Now, one of my favorite things to put on these pipe cleaners is beads. Uh, just regular pony beads is fine, but if you have littles, you might want to get some extra large beads. Um, but what we use these for is not just some fancy decorations, although they, they totally are, but um, they're also really great fine motor skills. And especially for those that are still working on that threading exercise, uh, pony beads onto chenille stems is a lot easier to get on than pony beads onto say regular string or yarn which by the way is the next thing on our list some string or yarn or both uh like i said fine motor skills putting beads on them uh but sometimes we'll also use them as you know hair for little creatures or uh hanging things uh, so you'll definitely need some of that. Next up, my daughter would be so upset with me if I forgot to mention the shiny things. By shiny things, I mean glitter, sequins, rhinestones, whatever sparkles. She adores it. So make sure if you, especially if you have a daughter, that you're going to want some shiny things. Now, sometimes, a lot of times, I say no to the glitter because any crafter will tell you that that makes a huge mess that is almost impossible to clean it all up. I swear if you work with glitter one day, two weeks later, you're still cleaning glitter out of your hair. Yes, hair. I don't know how it gets there, but it does. So most of the time we opt for the bigger shinies like these sequins. That leaves our last thing, scissors. Now, remember if you're working with kids, you're going to want the ones that are rounded on the top so that they don't poke it, their eye out, or so they say. Anyway, these are safer for kids. Uh, don't get the paper scissors for them. Uh, that only really leads to them getting really frustrated when that paper bends instead of cutting. Uh, so go ahead, give them a little bit of trust, and go ahead and get them the regular scissors just with a rounded tip. That way we can cut paper and glue paper onto paper and thread some beads and make it shiny and make it colorful and whatever it is, we will have tons and tons of fun doing. So thank you for joining me today for that list that was totally not comprehensive, but a list of my personal top 10 arts and crafts supplies for kids that you must have in your home. If even those 10 things seemed like way too much and you're overwhelmed, you're just now getting started out, here is what I want you to do. All you need is something to color on, paper, something to color with, markers or crayon, some scissors to cut the paper, and some glue to glue the paper to the paper. That's it. Those are the four things that I want you to get if you are just getting started. Otherwise, go on Amazon or your nearest grocery store and pick up those 10 things to get you started on your next project. Now, don't forget to like this video and subscribe so that you will get a notification whenever I come out with more videos. And don't forget to check out my blog. 
again, is here in the description so that you can see all the fun projects that Rue, my daughter, and I have already done so that you can get some inspiration for your next project. Bye, guys.